Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and I'm going to work free response question number six on the 2023 AP Chemistry exam. This is a short problem, and it's worth a total of four points out of the total 46 on the free response section. Just so you know, I'm recording this video on May the 3rd, 2023, and the official answer key has not been released yet, so I'm doing my best to share what I think the correct answers are. Just a disclaimer, I do not work for College Board. I'm just a chemistry teacher who's been teaching AP for 23 years, and sometimes I make a mistake. And remember that any answer that is chemically and factually correct will be accepted by the AP readers, even if it doesn't match what's on their key. So with that in mind, here's question six. Question six starts out by asking us about intermolecular forces. And so we're asked about HBr, and HF. And so we have intermolecular forces present in these here. So for the first one, HBr, you need to realize that it has London dispersion forces, mainly because everything has London dispersion forces, but it also has dipole-dipole forces. And that's because HBr is a polar molecule. It has a po if it's a polar molecule, it's going to have dipole-dipole forces holding it together. Now HF is, is really very similar. It has London dispersion forces, because everything does, but it also has hydrogen bonding. Now the difference is that you, know, you have to have an HF bond, uh, an HO bond, or an HN bond essentially to have hydrogen bonding. And this has one of those. So I'd say hydrogen bonding and dispersion forces on the HF, and those are the other two for HBr. So if you got those, then give yourself a point for getting all that. Now part B, in part one here, it tells us, or it asks us, based on the types and relative strengths of intermolecular forces, explain why the uh, heat of vaporization of HF is much higher, or is higher than that of HBr. And it comes back to those intermolecular forces, though, uh, there. The, the answer that I would put is that the hydrogen bonding that's found in HF is significantly stronger than the much weaker dipole-dipole forces in HBr. And we know that since those forces have a whole lot to do with those physical properties, you know, since the forces that are holding the HF molecules to each other are so much stronger, it's going to require a whole lot more energy, more heat energy, in this case, you know, 25.2 kilojoules per mole, to vaporize that HF than it would to vaporize the HBr. So we have the weaker intermolecular forces, you know, dipole-dipole, that's, that's much weaker than the hydrogen bonding over here, so it doesn't take as much energy to, to vaporize that. So give yourself a point if you said something like that. And moving on to part B2, it says calculate the amount of thermal energy in kilojoules required to vaporize 6.85 grams of HF. So this is basically just a stoichiometry problem. We have to take the 6.85 grams of HF, and of course step one in pretty much any stoichiometry is convert to moles. So we're going to convert this to moles, so grams on bottom, one mole on top, and if you add up the uh, the atomic masses here, our, our molar mass of HF is 20.01 grams. So we can cancel grams top and bottom. And our second step, we're trying to get two kilojoules. So I'm going to put moles on the bottom so it'll cancel out with this moles here. And the kilojoules will have to go on top. Now what numbers go in here? Well, we get that right out of the little table here. It's 25.2 kilojoules per one mole to vaporize this compound. So moles can cancel, and now we just have to do the math. 6.85 divided by 20.01 times 25.2, and I get an answer of about 8.63 kilojoules. So that's our energy for the vaporization of that amount of HF. So give yourself a point if you got, got that one right. The last question on this, uh, or the last part of this question, says, based on the arrangement of electrons in the bromine and fluorine atoms, explain why the bond length in an HBr molecule is greater or longer than that in an HF molecule. And it has to do with those electron shells. We have to say that bromine, you know, it, it's further down the periodic table, but you have to say that in terms of it has two more occupied electron shells than fluorine. So because of that, the distance from the nucleus of bromine to its valence electrons is going to be farther 
or greater than that of, of F, of fluorine. So because bromine has a higher atomic radius, the bond length between H and Br is going to be much longer than the bond length between H and F. And so that's what you want to say, something about the two more occupied electron shells in Br. So give yourself one point if you got that one. And that gets you the total of four points on this short free response question. That's question six. Four points possible, and I hope you got as many of those as possible. If you could hit that like button, it would be a big help to get the word out about my AP Chem videos. Come back soon. I hope to see you again so we can learn some more chemistry together.